How's it going, important people? Master Duel has just announced that they are implementing effective August 31st, a new ban list. And the ban list looks solid, except for the fact that it probably means rest in peace to our top tier branded Dark Magician deck. Unfortunately, branded Fusion's getting hit again. We're gonna get into the list here, and we're gonna talk about why, even though Branded DM may be no more. There may be some good news right around the corner. Let's get into it, guys. Before we get into the ban list, guys, I am going to preface and say I'm just going to probably hit on the main points that really affect the meta as well as, obviously, our Dark Magician deck. So... If you guys want to see me go through full ban lists and breakdowns in the future, let me know in the comments. If I do a good job, this is my first time doing a video like this, so let's see how we do. Nadir Servant, like I said, we're, I'm going to probably go through some of these rather quickly. Nadir Servant from 2 to 3, this is mainly a, a boost to Dogmatica. They don't really do much. Ancient Fairy Dragon from 1 to 3, that's, you know, most people will play it at 1 anyway, so that's kind of silly there too. And then uh, Girsu, the Orcrest. Orcrest gets a good little boost, which is nice. Nice. I like the Orcrest decks. I like what they do. I think it's a cool deck. I might mess around with it sometime. That is everything that is going to be unlimited. So just kind of like taking off some stuff that probably shouldn't have been limited in the first place. So these are the cards to be semi-limited. We got Blaster, the Dragon Ruler of Infernos. So Dragon Ruler gets, gets a buff. We're, we're seeing a come up of Dragon Ruler. This is actually kind of huge because it is a level 7, which, as we know, goes well with Kash Tira. So that can be something that we pay attention to later on in the future. Also, if I start playing Kash DM more often, you might see this deck, or this card in my deck. Pot of Extravagance goes from 3 to 2. So many decks are hurt by this all of a sudden because Labyrinth is abusing it amongst other decks. Pot of Extravagance is in a lot of rogue decks. So I, I know, for instance, like in my Tomb deck, I have Pot of Extravagance. So many decks use it. Now it gets semi-limited. It probably will get limited eventually. And then Luster Pendulum, the Draco Slayer. Not much to say there. Pendulums need, need the support. The first card on the limited list is Branded Fusion. Branded Fusion goes from 2 to 1. On the previous ban list, it went from 3 to 2. And I remember saying that this only hurts people that splash branded in as an engine i.e this guy because branded despy has so many ways to search for branded fusion with it at two it really didn't do much to that deck now that it's at one it almost completely eradicates the chance of using branded as an engine as a, as a splashable engine and it really cripples branded despia because hypothetically if you at, if you are able to banish their one copy of branded fusion the deck is unplayable, especially with Kashtira at large. If their one copy of Branded Fusion gets banished, there's almost no reason to play it. So, for some reason, they decide to do Branded Fusion really dirty. I hate to see it go like this. However, there is a silver lining here. And I want you guys to listen, listen to me closely here, okay? I think that this is an opening for our boy Dragoon to come to Master Duel. What do you guys think? Here's why I think this. Everybody complains and says, whoa, we can't have Dragoon come to the game, not because we're worried about Dark Magician abusing it, which they should be, but they're worried about branded players using Dragoon as another boss monster that they can go into, which is a legitimate worry. However, now with branded fusion to one, branded Despy has been a top tier deck for almost a year now realistically it's probably gonna fall off that tier list and with that being said i think this is the avenue that we needed to see for dragoon to make his advent to master duel so guys let me know below if you think i'm if i'm onto something here i do think that in a couple months you might see a ban list that brings dragoon from banned to limited and if that is the case i want you guys to message in the comments below and say that i was right and if i'm wrong then just we'll act like this never happened but i do think that this is a way for dragoon to come to the game so maybe i'm injecting some copium into people's veins i hope that this is a blessing in disguise even though 
Right now, it hurts my branded Dark Magician heart. Let's go on to the next card. The next card is a big W. It is a card I hate. It's the worst card in Yu-Gi-Oh! That grass looks greener. This card should not exist. This card is a card that allows you to trigger 10 plus effects for absolutely nothing. I hope that they one day ban this card altogether. I hope that they remove this card from the Yu-Gi-Oh! catalog. This should not exist. So I'm happy to see it go to one. Kelbeck. Kelbeck was a card that for some reason did not get hit in the initial Ishizu hits. All the other Ishizu cards went to one. Kelbeck stayed at two. Now Kelbeck is at one. And we have Sprite Jet also at one. And Swap Frog at one. So these are two hits to Sprite. As well as, you know, RIP Paleo. Whatever happened to that deck. But two big hits here to Sprite. And then this is a big hit to Tear Laments. The next thing we have is the Forbidden List. And we have the first card on that list being Rongo Bongo. Guys, if you have had the terrible instance of having to run into a sales ban Rongo and scoop the game, then I do feel bad for you. This is the last time you'll have to deal with it. I'm so glad that this card is banned. It's such a stupid card. Agito goes from one to zero. So that is an entire Ishizu Miller that doesn't exist anymore. Terra Laments cannot use this card. It is a huge hit to Terra Laments, but not as big as the one we're about to see. Bish Balkan, FTK is gone. This was a card that was used for degeneracy. I'm happy to see it go to zero. Block Dragon, another card. at Emancipator is such a huge deck. It has been a consistent top tier deck and it's because of Block Dragon because they're able to set up these crazy Omni Negate boards. Now with Block Dragon gone, I think that deck is going to crumble. And the last hit is Tear Laments Murley. This does two things. One, it's one less, one less name for them to mill and be able to fuse with. But also, Murley being banned, it being the only level two for Tear Laments, now they can't use Sprite Sprint. Now they can't use Sprite Elf. It really hurts a lot of Tear decks. To be honest with you, I would have rather seen them not go out like this. I'd rather them just see, I'd rather just see Kit Kalos get banned and then see what people can still make with it. Now I feel like this deck is kind of silly to play. I mean, it will definitely still see some play because it will still be kind of viable and there will still be some different things that they can do with it, but it, they could have went about this a different way. It's kind of a weird hit, but hey, I'm here for it. I hate Terra Lumens. All my homies hate Terra Lumens, so it's cool. This is the ban list, guys. This is it. If we look at the tier list, almost every top tier deck is hit in some way. Tear Laments got a big hit. Branded Despia obviously is getting a big hit. Dragon Link and Rika are going to run wild. They're going to be getting huge boosts here. Branded Tear Laments, Sprite gets a big hit. Adam Spear gets a big hit. This is going to be a crazy, crazy ban list. It's going to definitely close the gap between a lot of rogue decks and top tier decks. And you might see some of those decks creep in, you know. Here you're seeing Pendulum Magicians and you still see uh, Sword Soul Tenyi in here. So you're going to see a lot of decks that weren't getting that much attention. They're going to start getting more attention. Guys, I hope Dragoon can come into the game from this in the future. Let's enjoy some replays. I'm going to show you guys some changes I made to my branded DM deck. And let's try to enjoy it for these next 10 days. It is in effect, this ban list is in effect August 31st. So we got 10 days, nine days by the time this video hits to enjoy Branded Dark Magician. Let's get into some of these duels. A lot of you guys were wondering how we handle cash and this replay will show it. Cash right now isn't much. So I will say they're very easy to beat, especially just by themselves. This was a weird duel. I chanced it on Magnema in the hopes that if they did manage to OTK me because I didn't want to play into that maxi. They did manage to OTK me. I'd be able to defend my life once with Magnumut. They go Fenrir, instant contact. They're just trying to zone lock me. So not much going on here. They use Rise Heart's effect, finish the top three, lock a zone, and they end their turn. So when I see this, I'm like, okay, time to cook. They have another maxi. I'm like, whatever. They use Shangri's effect to summon out Fenrir. I summon a Luber and I search for the branded fusion. They end up banishing my Luber and then locking out another of my zones. I'm gonna go fusion deployment into Mirror Jade. Remember, Shangri 
cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect. Well, it could, but then it gets, you know, they just detach a material from it. So, non-targeted removal. Fallen of Albaz coming in clutch. We go into Mirror Jade. Now that we have Mirror Jade on the field and Shangri off, our zones are unlocked. I go Branded Fusion to summon out Albion. I'm just trying to get damage on the board because I'm under maxi. I'm going to try my best to OTK here. I summon out Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. I also summon out Magnemut. And I'm going to banish their Fenrir using my Mirror Jade's effect here. And this is enough damage on the board. And we finish it up pretty easily. So I think the take home point is non targeted removal, easy ways to out Shangri. Same with Fenrir. I would even consider, you know, just adding in Kaijus and maybe even Lava Golem. Those are easy ways to get Fenrir without triggering its effect off the board, and same with Shangri. This replay is short because we use our own degeneracy to win a game, and that degeneracy is in the form of Secret Village of the Spellcasters, effectively floodgating our opponents out of using spells. I'm going to search for Soul Servant, to stack Eternal Soul on the top of the deck so I can add it with Dark Magical Circle's effect, and then Fusion Deployment to get that Dark Magician out. Secret Village single-handedly wins games, guys. This card will cripple Runic, cripple Branded Despia, and it will hurt Terra Laments and Sprite even. So those are all the top tier decks we're seeing. I, even Kashtira is hurt because they can't play their Birth and their Sacred card that allows them to draw two cards. These are decks that are heavily affected by Seeker Village of the Spellcasters. With that being said, I don't know if I will keep it in the deck for good. It's definitely more of a side deck card, but since Master Duel is the best of one without a side deck, it really doesn't you know, do much in that regard. However, I would definitely consider putting it in your deck if you're playing Dark Magician, because being able to take out a third of my opponent's gameplay, and in some cases, if I'm doing against Runic, you know, 100% of their gameplay, that is, that is too huge to ignore. This is my updated branded Dark Magician deck. If you guys haven't seen the previous video, I'm gonna link it above. I have a full deck breakdown of the deck that I took to master rank and all the cards I used and why I chose them. If you guys have seen that video, then you're going to notice there are some changes, one being a Luber. I have it, obviously, to search for Branded Fusion. And then also I added an extra copy of Fusion Deployment, an extra copy of Dark Magical Circle, and I added in the two Seeker Village of the Spellcasters. We already talked about Seeker Village, great Floodgate card. But also, I do want to talk about the fact that I took out Super Polymerization. Super Poly is a great card. However, unfortunately, Kashtira just doesn't have a lot of targets to hit with Super Poly. So I noticed it kind of being a brick, so I ended up taking it out. And because I took it out, I was able to add a lot of extra stuff to my extra deck. And one of the key things I want to focus on is Chaos Angel. Chaos Angel is a great card, very easy to go into using Dark Magician and Magician's Rod. Because Magician's Rod acts as a tuner whenever it's being summoned, whenever it's being used to summon Chaos Angel. And then it won't be destroyed by battle. It can't be destroyed by battle if it's summoned using a dark monster. However, if you summon it using Cartesia and a Bestial monster, then it has both effects to not be able to be destroyed by battle, but also it is unaffected by your opponent's activated monster effects. Very good card. It could also banish a face-up monster when it's summoned, or face-up card when it's summoned. Very, very good card. I also added in Selene and Axis Code for finishing plays, and Master of Chaos is back in the extra deck. So with that being said, this is the deck I'm going to be rocking with for the next few days. I'm going to enjoy it to the max. Let me know what you guys think of the ban list. What did you guys like about it? What did you guys dislike? I obviously loved a lot of things about this ban list. I hate the Brand Fusion hit, but maybe we're on to something. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think that they might bring back Dragoon following this ban list? Guys, I look forward to hearing from you. I will see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves and go out of your way to make somebody's day special. Peace.